I've been following this Gamergate thing since the start of it. Since it was called the Quinspiracy thing back when it was all about this Zoe Quinn chick and all that nonsense. And I haven't really said a whole lot about it. I've just been sitting on the sidelines, kind of quiet, making my observations as all the facts have unfolded. And I'm willingly choosing to break my silence because I can't hold it anymore. I don't think that this is really about video games and journalism corruption as much as it is about how people can utilize hashtags and PR campaigns to a very corrupt end. I think the fact that this is going on in general is being taken advantage of by all of the parties involved. And I'm not saying the people that are on the right side that are saying this is bullshit. I'm saying people that are on the side of it happening in the first place. People like Kotaku, people like IGN, Rock Paper Shotgun, BuzzFeed, any of these other shitty fucking websites that I honestly haven't patronized much in my life because they don't post anything remotely interesting to me. They basically yammer on about stuff I don't care about. Thus, I don't, you know, I don't visit them. But what I'm seeing going on is I'm seeing a lot of evidence being uncovered that there was a lot of money involved in this entire thing through different venture capital companies. What is venture capital? Venture capital is kind of what Mitt Romney did. The guy who was running for president before he was a presidential candidate. He owned something called Bain Corporation, B-A-I-N, not the guy from Batman. What companies like this do is they, they really don't do anything much other than own other businesses or at least stock in those businesses and if those businesses succeed well then they succeed if they fail well then they fail but the problem is if they fuck up and they fail it's still more money in the bank for the people that own the investment they don't need to worry about losing that investment because all of the money that business ever raised goes straight to their pocket and I don't understand how that is legal that's what I see going on here I'm going to post a series of tweets, links to them, in the description box underneath this video below that the internet aristocrat shared earlier today. That's what swayed my entire opinion about this thing. I don't think that it has anything to do with video game journalism corruption in and of itself how shitty things in the indie video game industry can be. I think the reason this massive tsunami of censorship complete and utter corruption on the behalf of these assholes who are up to this stuff has everything to do with they don't want people to find that out. When somebody like Moot, who runs and owns 4chan, is taking handouts of 600,000 damn dollars with the aid of somebody that runs one of these venture capital companies... It, the pieces to me started falling together. And in my opinion, this is what's going on. They are taking advantage of the fact that this whole thing is even happening at all, that anyone has generated any interest in it whatsoever, so that it keeps getting talked about. It keeps getting circulated around different websites. It keeps getting talked about on the internet. And no matter where you post about it, no matter where you say anything about it, even this video in and of itself can be used to an advantage to keep pushing this whole massive PR campaign. Because that's, in my opinion, all this seems to be. So they can keep generating shit tons of ad revenue through it. Now, it doesn't matter if you're boycotting these websites or not. They're still making money off the fact you're talking about it in general. And, you know, I am willing to negotiate a truce with Mundane Matt. I'm willing to retract my previous very, very asinine and vulgar statements toward him so that awareness of this can be brought. But I do have to say, you can't just, in your video, you suggested people just, you know, if you stop talking about it, this whole thing, you know, you, you can't just stop talking about it and it goes away. What is going on is bullshit. You can't just fucking use people's emotional investment and time investment in, in saying this is a very serious problem. This is a huge amount of corruption. There's a huge amount of money involved in this and if that's all it's about, that's all our time and energy and effort and bringing exposure to this to you is, is, is more money. You can't just say anything 
or not say anything, excuse me. You can't just sit on your hands and pretend that's not an issue and hope it'll go away. Th this is absolute manipulation of media, in my opinion. And for the last couple of days, I, I, I'd been wondering to myself, why is it that they were going to such a massive extent to cover this up? Why are they going to such an extent to just shut people the fuck up and not have them talk about this? You know, at least in, in, in certain particular ways. On 4chan, you know, today, there are, there are literally threads coming and going within 10 minutes of each other. People getting banned for even bringing it up. People on Reddit were getting what's called shadow banned. What does that mean? Well, it's like being banned from the website entirely in the sense that other people cannot see what you post unless it's approved by a moderator, which it will never be. If you're a person that gets shadow banned, you can post replies and comment on other people's posts, and to you, it looks like the website's functioning normally, that you're still a member. In reality, no one else is actually seeing anything you're saying. This kind of reminds me of someone everyone knows that I've had kind of a history with on this website. Oh, motherfucking Nisian. Remember back in around 2010, 2011, whenever he wanted to sway things into his personal favor, he would shut off the comments, disable the likes, and you couldn't have an opinion on it unless it was a video that hardly anyone was going to watch in the first place? It always bothered me that websites that are supposed to have some sort of journalistic integrity whatsoever were willing to resort to that level of middle school trolling in order to save their ass. Kotaku today posted one of the most dumb ass things I'd ever seen. They posted an article about how Anita Sarkeesian was allegedly sent a bomb threat by an enigmatically anonymous user way back in March. Well, if this were true, if it had actually happened, which I highly doubt, and I can guarantee you it probably didn't even happen, if this had happened at all, it would have been huge news in these communities way back in March. So why the fuck did they feel the need to wait until today to just drop the news of this when people start realizing that there is a serious connection between these facts that people are putting up? Anyway... I think that more awareness is required on this issue. Because this isn't just about video games anymore. This is about people who are willing to take advantage of your interest in any given subject and manipulate it so that they can gain a monetary output from it. That's fucking just sick! You giving a shit about something is money in the bank. That's disgusting to me. This not your shield thing. I support it. Because you're... You're compart-fucking-mentalizing people. You're compartmentalizing, taking advantage of the fact that they're, you know, they're either a minority, they're maligned socially for one reason or another, they're different for one reason or another, and you're grouping them up as a bunch of, you know, angry, white, nerdy neckbeards when that's not the case. Just so you can use their fucking outrage that you're doing that in order to generate more fucking ad revenue to yourself. Fuck you, bastards. That's fucking disgusting. I know I've been trying to calm down in my rants more. I said that myself. But that really does set me the fuck off. That you are willing to use people's motherfucking outrage to just bank more money in your pocket. You can all eat fucking shit. And as far as, you know, Kotaku goes out and they say that oh, we employ journalists, not bloggers. Fuck you! You employ fucking people that don't know the first goddamn thing about journalism. Anybody can go on the internet and just say that they have a master's in journalism. That guy on CNN, what is his name, Anderson Cooper? That's a fucking journalist. There's a guy who's been places. That guy who ran uh, another TV show on there. His name's Anthony Bourdain. He was a journalist for a while. 
He's also a chef, apparently. These are people that have actually done something with their lives besides sit on their fucking ass and take advantage of people saying that I'm a, I'm a journalist. I'm a journalist because I have the credentials to prove it. I mean, I really don't. But the thing is, I'm going to take advantage of you because I think you're a stupid fucking asshole who doesn't have my popularity on the internet. So therefore, I can just be a really pissed off blogger in reality and take advantage of the fact that I'm not a journalist and just say that I am. Worst comment ever. Those are the kind of fucking people that your site employs. Those are the kind of people that are willing to commit some of the most shitty ethics violations I've ever seen. I mean, you're willing to just fuck your way to the top and say, hey, there's no problem with that and you're not allowed to say anything about it. I mean, you're the kind of people that it would seem who would just be like, okay, let me pull out my big wad of cash. Now, how much money am I going to have to give you, you know, to shut you up about this? You know, is $100,000 good enough? You can't put a price on shit like that. Anyway, I'm going to make probably a lot of videos about this because that's the final straw for me. When, you know, when I was... When I put those two and two together, when when this whole when this occurred to me, what it really is, it's not about games, it's a big fucking PR campaign, and everyone, no matter who they are on any side, is being taken advantage of in this. I had to say something. Because at this point, it's not even about games anymore. Anyway, I'm some guy on the internet, and uh, so are you. So, until next time. And I'm going to monetize this, by the way. I am. Because I'd rather it be monetized and that money be used for something constructive, which what I'm going to use it for is I'm going to go down to a homeless shelter locally here, and I'm going to try to help some people out. Because I saw a video recently on my Facebook page where it's this homeless challenge. And I really kind of got disgusted when I first saw it. And because I thought, you know, I thought it was like, oh, great, they're going to go beat up homeless people on fucking. You no. Know. What they did is they bought this guy $170 worth of groceries to get him through the next couple of weeks. And that is a challenge I'm willing to take. That is something that, I mean, it inspired me. That is something that if I were in that guy's position, you know, I wouldn't even know how to thank him. I mean, there are a lot of homeless people, yes, in this country that will take advantage of your money and just use it to buy drugs and booze. But there are some people out in this world that don't deserve to be in that position, that they need help. And if a little bit of food can help them, if maybe enough money to go buy an actual, like a motel room to get a real roof over their head for a couple of nights is what they need, then I'm willing, more than willing to do that. So... The ad revenue from this and from my next several, several videos is going to go towards that effort. I've also been considering starting a donation poll so that people can help donate money to good charities, like my friend's place down in California. My friend's place is a charitable organization that helps displaced and homeless teenagers and youths in California. And I absolutely love what they try to do. Anyway, that... All aside, for now, I'm some guy in the internet, so are you. Until next time, take it easy.